When you begin to glaze, it is important that we pay attention to our test tiles because they're a different color than what it looks like in the bottle, such as this dark blue that comes out dark blue, but when you paint it on, it looks like a light purple. If we look at the back of our test tile, there is a name matching the name on the bottle, and that's how you can double check and make sure that you always have the correct color. When I go to glaze them, I'm purposely wanting to create an accent with my two different colors. So I'm going to make it so that the dark indents of my coil pot are one color and the um, uh, outside top layer almost feels like another color. I am not going to glaze the very bottom of the coil pot because that will be a waste of my time. So as you notice, what I am doing for this first layer is I'm getting a really nice thick glaze inside the cracks. What is on the top of the layer or on the very top surface, I'm just going to kind of brush away to the left and to the right. All I am worried about at this moment in time is getting down inside those cracks and making sure that none of those little spaces down inside of there are still going to remain white. When I'm doing this step, I purposely chose the darker of my two colors because that way when it glazes, it'll pop and stand out. If I use the lighter color inside the creases, the darker color on the top layer will end up becoming too vibrant and it won't be able to be seen with those little creases on the inside and it will end up looking like it's one color. So again, if you choose to do your coil pot in this way, really make sure that you are getting down inside those cracks so that it is nice and glazed and there are no white gaps in there. And then the top surface you are spreading out and also you are using the darkest color on the inside bottom layer and then we're going to apply the top layer as a lighter value. What I'm going to do now is take a damp, not soaking wet or you will ruin your project. I'm going to take a damp sponge and I'm going to lightly brush away the top coat of this clay project. What I'm hoping to do is to re-reveal the white bisque wear, but leave that glaze that I just applied down inside those cracks. So as you can see, a little bit of the white is showing back through, but that glaze is still down inside of there. If I do this when my glaze is wet, I will not do a good job on this and it will end up just running. If I do this where my sponge has too much water in it, the water will drip inside of those cracks and thin out the glaze inside there and then it won't be thick enough to show up that bright color. So I'm very gently with a damp sponge that is not soaking wet and my fingers are not soaking and wet either. I'm just gently rubbing away the top layer while leaving the darkest color inside. For the final step of this glazing option, I'm actually going to need to make sure I have a little bit of the glaze in a separate bowl and I have a clean sponge. I'm gently going to dab just a tiny bit into this glaze and I'm going to wipe any excess off on the edge of the bowl. Now I'm basically going to sponge paint or dab the glaze onto the bowl. It's not going to cover everything on the first coat. There's going to be little white dots that join in and you see some of that bisque wear showing through. But if I put this on too thick, what will happen is the glaze will ooze down into those creases where I put my dark blue color. That is going to make it so that when I'm, uh, this is being glazed and fired, I won't have the blue anymore. It'll just be this green that will overpower it. My goal while glazing this step is to get a nice consistent layer of green all the way around the exterior of the bowl. This will allow it to dry and I can put on another coat afterwards. When using this glaze, I am going to have to do this process three times. So now as you see, when we speed up the video, I'm going to go ahead, finish glazing the outside of this bowl with my sponge paint, lightly dabbing the clay, glaze onto the clay. Then you are going to see me go ahead and glaze the inside of the bowl. For the inside of the bowl, I use my paintbrush. I'm going to make sure I get my edges really well on this first layer just to really get down into those creases and places that I need to be. And then you're just going to see I paint a normal coat on the inside. While this is being painted, the outside glaze is already drying. By the time I'm done with the inside layer, I should be able to go ahead and do my second layer on the outside of this glaze. Then do the second layer on the inside and my third layer on the outside. 
third layer on the inside. Once I've completed three even consistent layers that are not thin, not watered down, and are not big, thick, and gloppy, I know that I will have a nice finished piece when it comes out of the kiln. The final step is to clean up the bottom edge of my clay so that it does not stick to the glazing shelf inside the kiln. Taking a damp, not soaking wet sponge, I'm just going to put my project on top of the sponge and I'm just going to wipe it a little bit with a little bit of pressure and maybe even rotate in a circle. Notice how it cleans up my bottom edge really nicely and I know that it will be safe on the kiln shelves.